Hi, Julie Jones from SSB Performance, Smarter, Stronger, Better Mindset Training, here with this week's Mindset Made Simple Tip of the Week, brought to you by Game Day Sportswear. This week we're talking about thoughts becoming things. And many of you know, I have had really cool jobs. I got to coach Division I softball for more than 25 years, and now I get to train with people on a daily basis, working on their mental performance, and even though I don't train in a physical way every day, these trainings are just as fulfilling. And one of my favorite trainings is every Friday at 8 a.m. when I get to train with one of my dear friends who also happens to be one of the smartest people I know, and she's the CEO of a nonprofit organization. And we spend an hour every week working on her mental game and helping her stick to, and both of us actually, have accountability to the things that we know are important to success. In this discussion, we started talking about a mutual friend or a mutual hero, maybe I should say, and that is Dr. Neil Malachy, who used to be the president at Baldwin Wallace University when I was there and when my dear friend worked there. And Dr. Malachy is 89 years old. He retired from his presidency in 1999. He's still a big part of the college. In fact, my college roommate and her husband and some of our friends just went to an alumni gathering just recently, and there was a video of Dr. Malachy playing. And during that time, there was scantly a dry eye. We were so enthralled by his words. And in fact, as he spoke and he talked about the motto of the college, we all said it with him. That's what a, what a leader he was. His mission was embedded in each one of us, and all of us truly loved him. He knew everybody by name. He was an amazing leader, and we all held him in very, very high esteem and still do. But Dr. Malachy was recently asked to go back to campus for a donor engagement, and he declined. And the reason that he declined is because he's 89 years old. He doesn't get around like he used to. He suffers from some ailments that, that keep him from being able to do the things that he could do when he was on campus. So he decided that he didn't want to be a distraction. Well, from what I'm told, the college president called and asked him again, and then Dr. Malachy changed his mind and decided to go. The story goes on like this. He went. And while he was there, this 89-year-old who has a hard time sitting up straight at times, has a hard time, he's 89. I mean, let's, let's face it. We'll be lucky to have our minds like he does at this time, but his physical capacities have waned, just like you would expect. But as he went on campus, or he got on campus, and he went into the facility, all of a sudden, he was straighter, he sat up straighter, he spoke more clearly, he engaged people for hours, and his physical limitations seemed to vanish even for just that time. And as my friend and I were talking about this, I was reminded of a study, a 1979 study, it was called the Counterclockwise Study, where uh, Ellen Langer, who was a researcher, brought a group of men together and took them on a retreat. And they were all in their 70s, so some of them shuffled in, some of them walked in with a cane, probably as Dr. Malachy thought that he would, he didn't want to distract by going in in that way and being something that people didn't remember him as. But all these men went to this retreat and during this retreat they were immersed, fully immersed, in 1959, so 20 years earlier. So they were acting as if and living as if they were in their 50s. Well, what happened during this time? Oh, everything changed. They said that the, on the last day of the retreat, they had a small football game in the courtyard. Mind you, some of them walked in with a cane. Things changed. Their physical appearance even changed. They brought people into the lab afterwards and showed pictures of them prior to the retreat and after the retreat, and they were viewed as significantly younger from the time that they were there. So they were watching the news, they were engaged in the things that were happening in the, in the late 50s, they were wearing the clothes that they wore in the 50s, they saw pictures of themselves as they were in the 50s, and they acted as if they were in the 50s. So they were thinking as if they were in the 50s. And I mean, this is unbelievable. 
So basically what happened is that they changed their physiology. Their hearing improved, their vision improved, their joint mobility improved, they had fewer signs or, or symptoms of arthritis, they had increased cognitive awareness and mobility, they changed. That's amazing. And as we were talking about Dr. Maliki having this experience where he went in and all of a sudden was not his 89 year old self, but his self that existed in 1999 when he retired, he was meeting the expectations of what he was then and living up to the expectations of those that he was going to meet. That's amazing. All in thinking differently about who we are. Well, this research is backed up in a book called The Intention Experiment, Using Your Thoughts to Change Your Life and Your World. And this is by Lynn Taggart. And she contends that every thought we have is tangible energy with the power to transform. A thought is not only a thing, a thought is a thing that influences other things. And as we think about that, it's really important to start to think about how we think about ourselves and our circumstances. Our thoughts are powerful. So too are the expectations or the things that we think about the expectations of others. Think about it. This research has proven time and time again with this placebo effect. You don't know if you're getting the medicine or not, but because you think that the medicine is going to make a difference in you, you start acting or feeling in that way. This is proven time and time again in lab studies across the world. We can get ourselves to think ourselves into something or out of something in positive and negative ways. So we need to start thinking about our thoughts really do become things. How can a man who's 89 years old, who's afraid of going to make a distraction, all of a sudden turn into this man who is literally his former self, even if it's just for four hours? How about these guys that went on this retreat and were walking in with a cane and at the, on the last day they're out throwing the football around? But, by the way, I'm 32 years old from here on out. That's all there is to it. How old are you? That's the question. And we know this, you, some people think that they're old and they act like they're old. And some people think that they're young and they act like they're young because of the way they think. Not the way they feel, the way they think, which makes them feel differently, which makes them behave differently, which makes them perform differently, which gives them different results. That same sequence that we use in everything that we talk about. But what if you think, oh, all right, well, I really can't believe that because even if I think this, I mean, I think I'm not good, so how can I think I'm the best? Well, let's bridge that gap with a bridge statement. Maybe Dr. Malachy, and again, this is all for the purpose of our discussion, I don't know because I didn't talk to him personally, maybe he went from, I don't want to go because I'm going to be a distraction, to this, I can go and still have meaningful conversations with the people that I'm sitting with. That gives him an opportunity. That's not black and white, like I can't go, I'm gonna be a distraction. That turns into gray, and we know that very little in life is truly black and white. That gives him an opportunity to think about the things that he can do in a small way that he will believe. It's not jumping from I'm the worst to I'm the best. We're not gonna buy that crap, and we know it. So what's the bridge statement from I'm the worst, which we know isn't true, to I'm the best, which we don't believe is true and may not ever be true, but what's the bridge in between the two that can help us move closer to where we really want to be? We know this. We rarely outperform our self-image. We rarely underperform our self-image. So if we're thinking ourselves as the worst, but we really can't believe that we're the best or even what we really truly could achieve, then we've got to find a bridge between the two. And the statements that we say to ourselves and the way that we think can make a difference. Use a bridge statement. Go from I'm going to be a distraction to I can have meaningful conversations and then you never know what happens. All of a sudden you're standing up taller, you're sitting up straight, you're having conversations, you're lifting your head, you are crushing it because you took one small step toward changing the way you think about yourself which can turn into another step and another step 
and another step. And all those steps added up adds up to something big. So I want you to think about that bridge statement that you can use. So every time you start to go there, when you know your thoughts are not helping you, in fact, they're tearing you down, you start to think about facts. Not what you feel, but what you know. What are the facts that I know about what I've done, what is true, and what is a feeling? Feelings are not facts. Facts are facts. So when you start to go there, start throwing out the facts because facts can help lead to confidence and they can help give us that gray, not the black and white, I can or I can't, to the, oh, maybe I can and I'm going to use this bridge statement to help me get there. So it's time to start standing taller. It's start the time to start thinking brighter. It, even in small increments, it can all add up. Because as Bruce Lee said, the famous Bruce Lee, what you habitually think largely determines what you ultimately will become. It's a shift. It's a shift from I can't or I'm not or what if to I can't do that yet, but I am doing this and that's my bridge to get where I want to go. I'm a distraction. I can have conversations. So I am greatly honored to have the conversation with my friend, to have these conversations about our personal hero, Dr. Malachy, and I am grateful to have had his, his influence throughout my college career and beyond. And I am also grateful that I, like you, have the opportunity to bridge myself from where I am and what I'm thinking to where I want to go. Your challenge this week, what do you need to build a bridge to? Because thoughts become things. You can change your physiology with the way, with the way that you think. And that is awesome. If you'd like to talk more about this or anything that has to do with mental performance, reach out to me, Julie J at SSBPerformance.com. Until next week, thoughts become things. Where do you need to build your bridge? I encourage you to think about those little steps that move you from where you are to where you really can be. You don't even know what that limit is. Have a great week.